What's up, photographers? Welcome back to the studio. In a previous tutorial, I had you guys grain a small piece of glass. Uh, and what this is sort of an introduction to, a preparation for, is really an investigation into the, the camera technology. Like, what are all the components of a camera and how do they interact and how, you know, do we get them to produce images? Um, probably the best way to, uh, to figure most of that out would, um, would be to literally get a screwdriver and an old camera and just start to take it apart. But unless you've got a lot of old cameras sitting around just uh, waiting to be disassembled, uh, maybe the next best thing will be to build a camera. So the ground glass is going to be uh, sort of one component to a camera that you're going to make and um, do your best to use it to produce an image this semester. Now the image, the, the type of camera that we're going to produce is called a view camera or a box camera. Uh, pretty straightforward old piece of technology. Some of the earliest cameras sort of had this basic uh, component, right, where you have a viewing plane on the back. You would have some bellows, which is really just kind of a, a darkened space, and then the lens mount on the front. And typically box cameras would be made out of wood, and uh, the only sort of complicated piece would be uh, a lens you'd mount on the front, similar to this one that I have here. Big, heavy lens, nice big piece of glass, uh, and, you know, uh, they were uh, really great at doing, you know, a lot of the sort of portrait style work that we were doing, and a lot of early landscape photographers uh, were using these big kind of cameras. They were clunky, they took a long time to set up, um, but they're fairly easy to understand, uh, especially compared to maybe some of the complexities of what's going on in uh, future cameras. So let's build uh, using some of the equipment that you've got uh, around the house and maybe something that you've got around the studio, put together this basic arrangement. Uh, before we do that, I'm going to update one of those goofy little drawings I made in the last class period. Now, in the previous tutorial, I sort of walked through uh, what that camera's basic components are, right? And uh, this basic drawing is something I'll kind of use fairly regularly throughout the semester, right? A barrel on the front of the camera has lenses in it, it has an aperture in it, it has an image plane somewhere at the back of the camera, uh, there's a diagonal uh, reflex mirror somewhere in there, you've also got a shutter that divides it. Now that's a, a whole lot of stuff already in a fairly simplistic drawing. Let's just take out a couple of little pieces here and really focus on it. Let's talk about uh, what gives the lens of a camera its name. Uh, the lenses, the optical lenses, are pieces of glass uh, that sort of sit inside of the front of the camera. And this isn't you know, necessarily a physics class, but I'll give you a very brief understanding of how these lenses work. Um, when light comes into one of these lenses, uh, it finds itself a focal point somewhere behind the lens. So, you know, your subject would be sitting out here somewhere. And then this is our area, right, where we would want to get our image plane because the image is going to be focused right here. Um, now, we can actually kind of prove this using some of our basic ground glass and lenses that you just have around you. You could either pop the lens off your camera or actually you can even use the Fresnel lens uh, that I have in your kit. All you need to do uh, is be standing in a place where you have something nice and bright and um, hold your uh, lens in relation to your ground glass and once you get your sort of um, once you get your sort of focal plane in the correct place you should see an image resolve on the ground glass in front of you. The Fresnel lenses work even though they're not all that sharp um, the lens in your camera should work. I'm going to get the uh, cameras re, uh, reconfigured here and I'll show you what I'm, lo what I'm looking at. So I'm a bit limited here in my studio with how close uh, I am to my bookshelf here, but I've got my ground glass and I'll start with my Fresnel lens uh, just to sort of get a feel for what sort of um, what sort of image is possible. Now the Fresnel lens is a little bit goofy. It's kind of a magnifier more than, um, more than a focusing lens, but hey, look at that. I'm actually able to um, to register something of a fuzzy image, but still an image on the ground glass. You know what? The Fresnel lens really isn't um, isn't really uh, ideal for this kind of work. It's actually really going to help us brighten our ground glass. And so instead of using it as your lens, if you happen to have another lens around, um, sandwich it against your uh, sandwich it against maybe even tape it in place against your ground glass and find another lens that you can use for doing your focusing. Now here's a bit of a goofy one. This is actually the eyepiece out of an old camera and uh, it's a square lens. I'm going to try this one, see what sort of image we can resolve. Sure enough, uh, got a pretty decent, uh, nice bright 
and focusable image. I'm focusing just by kind of either moving the lens or moving the ground glass or some combination of both. Um, and this lens that I've got is, uh, is an enlarger lens. Uh, it came off of a darkroom photographic enlarger. It's a 50 millimeter lens. Let's just kind of get a sense for um, how different uh, this one is. There we go. Now this lens actually has an aperture control, uh, which isn't really going to help me here because I've got fairly bright studio, but uh, you can fairly easily tell that, yep, I'm able to get this image to focus. And I've got, uh, comparatively, uh, this lens much closer to my ground glass. It's got um, maybe a, a matter of inches, uh, not like the 10 or 12 inches like the Fresnel lens required. Uh, the bigger the lens, probably the better in this situation, and probably the farther away your subject uh, subject matter is, the easier this is going to be. So in that example, the Fresnel lens really helps brighten up um, the glass here. And I'm in a kind of a well-lit studio, so I can really kind of lose track of my lighting in a hurry. So what about, um, like, how do I get this to be brighter? How do I get it to be more visible? Well, uh, think about how dark it is inside of a camera. Uh, you need to sort of be standing on the dark side of that lens. If you, uh, if as you're building your basic camera, which is our, uh, the, the components will be your lens and uh, your ground glass, you might consider using a box, like the box cameras. In this case, I um, literally mean a box. I have a couple of these small and larger lenses at school that work really, really well for this technique. One of the things that makes them work really well is they have a sort of screw collet on the back. Uh, these lenses are usually 50 or 75 millimeter lenses. And uh, if we use a piece of this sort of black on black uh, drawing board, uh, we can create sort of a dark, a dark lens back that allows us to mount this lens uh, somewhere else. Now I have in the studio some of that black on black drawing board for you to use in your camera construction if you find it useful. Uh, and I also have some circle cutters, which will allow us to cut um, perfect radiuses out of the uh, out of that material uh, that may fit the lens that you have. Uh, not absolutely necessary, but you may find it useful for doing that kind of work. Once you've got uh, the lens in place, we just need to mount it in our box. Uh, a couple pieces of tape would do, and then on the inside of that box, uh, you have. The ability to sort of focus uh, your image plane in a much darker place. Your image will appear significantly brighter and uh, probably sharper on the glass itself. I'm really excited to see how you guys approach this camera building technique and what techniques you use uh, to actually photograph your functioning camera. Uh, now since these cameras don't produce photographs, right, they, all they do is produce the image, uh, you're welcome to use your smartphone or another camera uh, to try to rig up some sort of setup and record your camera in action. See you guys in the studio.